Greetings, and welcome to the Blastcast. I am Jarus, and with me as always is a man saltier than the Dead Sea, Lightning Dragon. This is a proven fact. Look it up. So let's get into this relatively short Star Citizen news. This week on Around the Verse, CIG showed off some tools that they created to help the artist design assets that fall within the parameters required to run in the game, as far as number of draw calls and things like that. This is to reduce the amount of work and rework that has to be done when creating assets for players and player characters. You know, we see this a lot as the game development goes on. They find what their biggest problem is, and then they create a tool that bypasses it. It's always a very interesting side of development. Other than that, the only other thing they really spent time talking about was the Argo SRV, kind of called the tow truck of the future. Now, some people have compared it to, like, a tugboat, and they talk about the size difference that it should tow more. But I really think it, it's better defined as, as a tow truck. And the reason I say that is that, you know, a tugboat will bring in even a very large boat, but it brings it in really slow, and, and this thing will tow someone through Quantum Drive. Now, the ship is 28.5 meters long, 19.5 meters wide, and 8.7 meters high. It has 10 SCU of internal storage, no weapons whatsoever. It does have countermeasures, though I'm not sure how effective that's going to be with basically a slow moving truck. The tractor beam mounts in the back swivel so they can attach in many different angles, and you can also work with others to go ahead and team up to tow a much larger vessel. Now, a solo SRV may be able to pull up to a Connie sized ship. But that's not the only use the ship has. You can also use it to transport cargo and move cargo around in hangar bays and whatnot. Grab the big pallets, grab the big storage boxes, and just move them around. Someone also did a size comparison and they showed that the SRV can almost fit into the Crucible. If the Crucible follows most ships that are of that scale and size, it'll probably get a little bit bigger. And so it's very possible that in the end, this ship might be able to fit inside that repair bay of the Crucible. And I think that combination would be very, very powerful. Obviously not in a combat sense. Now, since I own a Crucible, I managed to snag one too, and, well, there was one role that I felt was missing for a while. It was the tugboat kind of thing, the, the tow truck, whatever. I wasn't thinking they were going to do it. And when I saw it, I just had to snag it, like, instantly. So, what's the tally lightning? I'm at 40 ships, uh, at least 40 vehicles that can fly in space, and 10 dedicated ground vehicles. Too many. Yeah, but you could use them all. I'm actually not too surprised by this, since they talked about how hard it was for ship-to-ship -ship docking. It kind of makes sense that it's like, ah, it's a tractor beam, which they already have in game lore anyway. Yeah, I agree partially. There's a lot of ships that have tractor beams. I wasn't sure the, the strength of those tractor beams. Like, remember when the Cutlass first came out, the back door would open up, and this little, like, ball thing would extend on an arm, and there was a, supposed to be a, a tractor beam. Now, I was never sure how strong that was going to be. Clearly not that strong. I would assume it'd be for, like, grabbing loose boxes or maybe some scrap that you could grab or, I don't know, maybe a person. You know, and if you do own a Crucible, a good thing about this ship is that sometimes people are get broken down or stranded in asteroid fields. And that might be a ship that could be harder to get where you need to get into to dock that ship up. And this ship could basically drag it to you and then drop it in your repair bay. But on a side note, you know, talking about careers in Star Citizen... I kind of had the thought that maybe you could be an intergalactic repo man. They're going to have ship rentals in the universe, so I'm thinking maybe you, maybe you keep the ship too long and you get a mission to uh, go steal it back from a player. What's that uh, show? Something something dog or something? No, well, that's, that's a bounty hunter. Yeah, it's a bounty hunter. But there's actually there's a repo man show, so I'm thinking of myself that you could do your own little series on that. The price of the SRV is $130 with war bond purchase and LTI. Now, this price does fall in line with ships of similar size, and I don't find it unreasonable. But as always, if you're new to Star Citizen, you don't have to buy a ship with real money. Just buy the base game, it comes with a starter ship, and when you play the game, you earn money and you can buy any ship that you see in the pledge store can be purchased in-game with in-game currency. All these are is pledges, and you get a little bit of bonus with it. For me, a lot of it is I hate grind by any measure, and I think Lightning would agree with me on that too. I want to just get out there and play the game. Any role, anything I want to do, that's kind of been a big thing for me. And this just happened to be the last one on my list that I can even begin to fathom that I wasn't even sure they were going to do to begin with. But of course, we're not done talking about ships just yet. It's a long-missed segment in the show, but I think it's time to go ahead and bring it back. So let's dig into Lightning Dragon's favorite, favorite section, the Hornet Report. But why... CIG put a new Super Hornet on sale with LTI called the Heartseeker. 
It's a Valentine's Day special that carries four fixed guns, three size threes and one size four, with a nice little World War II-esque girl on a heart and some kind of faux kill stickers on the side of it. So for those of you looking to snag an LTI Super Hornet, now is your chance. Now I didn't actually get one of these as much as I like the skin because I have the military body upgrade kit and if I put it on that ship it would just undo the look anyway so I just decided to go ahead and let this one pass but it's a little bit more expensive than the standard Hornet but once again LTI it's kind of the F-14 of Star Citizen. Now let's just hope they implement it as well as DCS does. That might be dreaming big. CIG is adding simulated traffic effects to Arc Corp. What they do is they place elevated road systems and have kind of a 2D graphic that scrolls across and has lighting effects and things like that. So when you fly over, you'll see traffic. It's an okay tier zero implementation. I'm hoping that someday though, if they actually have this road system that's down there with that, like this 2D graphic on it, that since we can only land in the designated landing zones, if we could take our vehicles and actually drive down highways to another section or another part of town or something. I know it's a lot to ask for. It may never happen, but I would really love that so much. But right now they need to first focus on the core elements of the game, and they can come back to that years down the road maybe as tech gets better, as computers get faster, all that, and really flesh it out procedurally or otherwise. And lastly, let's get into Reverse Diverse real quick. It was just called the Sounds of Space. It's kind of a jaunt through what it takes to make sound effects and some general questions including different sounding toilets and things like that. If you're kind of an audiophile and you're kind of curious about how these things are made and what directions you're going with it, definitely check it out. But to be honest with you, there really wasn't a lot there that this channel would dig into. Uh, this isn't a sound channel, this is a flight channel, so it was entertaining, so I can give it that much. And later on during the week, we're going to be kind of flipping back and forth between DCS and IL-2, both modern and past, well, modern with DCS. And of course, intermixed with the extra casts where we go out and play Star Citizen and let all the weird things happen that happen in a game and development. All right, everyone, as I said, short episode this week, not a lot of information. We've got to be getting close to Evocati sometime. Cross your fingers. And I think this officially may have been the easiest episode for Lightning Dragon to ever record, because I think he said a combined four sentences. All right, everyone. Well, we will see you on the next one.